And now at 4, we want to transition to our community focus. As we first told you right here at 4 yesterday, the head of the Rhode Island Foundation is now retiring. Neil Steinberg isn't leaving for another year, but he is leaving very big shoes to fill. He's been the president and the CEO for 14 years. And of course, Neil joins us now live. Thanks so much for being here. Great to be here. Thank you. So, Neil, uh, why was now, or I guess a, a year from now, <laughs> why was it the right time to step down? Yeah, so, you know, this, this is a natural evolution. I've been there 14 years. You know, uh, you start to get a little older. I'll be 69 next year. Uh, it's a great time. The foundation's doing really well. I'm in, in decent shape. So it just seemed like this was a good time to do a transition. You know, you always want to go out on top when things are going well and uh, allow enough time for an orderly transition for a proper search process. So it just felt like it was the right time. Mm. Uh, you mentioned things going well. They're mm -hmm. going very well. Just to recap, your foundation has raised more than $600 million uh, in your time there. Yeah. You have overseen $700 million in grants. What is the secret to doing that? Uh, the secret is just being proactive part of the community and working with people in the community. So we work with generous donors, and that's how we, we raise the money. Uh, the money grows and the endowment grows because uh, up until recently the stock market was doing pretty well and it has over the long term. Uh, we're the largest funder in the state and we take that very seriously to, to be able to fund nonprofit organizations doing great work and that's what we do and it's a, it's a very good model of the more money we raise the more we can give out. Uh, the more community leadership and activities we get involved with, the more we raise the profile and people work with us. So it's just been a building process over the years. You mentioned that the Rhode Island Foundation, you know, relies on donors to provide mm -hmm. funding to local nonprofits. But what is maybe a misconception people have about the foundation or maybe something that people at home might not know? Yeah, sure. So we're an endowment model. So we have a, an endowment of about $1.4 billion built up over 107 years. And about a third of that money that we give out is discretionary, where we get to decide whoever gets it. But a lot of the funds, donors decide they want to go to this organization, or they want to go to the arts, or they want to go to you know, South County or something. So we both steward what the donors' wishes are, and that includes bequests. People pass away, and they leave their legacy. And then it, the rest is up to our grant program officers to determine the needs in the community. You know, certainly to the individual nonprofits that are receiving a grant, um, it could be a game changer for um, seeing their mission uh, mm -hmm. mission play out. Uh, you know, in, in all the grants that you've helped hand out, is there a moment that stands out to you that you said, wow, we're really making a difference here? Yeah, boy, that's a tough one. You, you know, we're the largest funder. I say that very humbly. I wish we were the 10th largest funder. I wish there were a lot of other big funders. You know, I have to go more current. So during COVID, starting in 2020, we pivoted and very quickly raised a lot of money for people in need, for housing, for food insecurity. And we raised, during that first year, $20 million. That was game changing. That got it out there very quickly. That was not our endowment model. Came in, we got it out as quickly as we could. We helped the state get CARES Act money out there and get it in need. The rest is kind of long-term systemic changes, education, healthcare, economic security. As we mentioned, you're announcing your retirement now, but you're going to stay on with the mm -hmm. foundation until May of 2023. There's right. going to be an extensive search for your replacement. Maybe that person is out there watching right now. <laughs> What's your piece of advice to them? Uh, you know, the commitments to the community in Rhode Island. Uh, for me, it's the best job I've ever had out of uh, many in, 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 during my career in Rhode Island, and I've never worked so hard in my life. And <laughs> those go hand in hand. If you love what you do, you work hard. But it really starts with commitment to the community, commitment to all Rhode Islanders, commitment to equity, closing achievement gaps, getting rid of disparities in health care. But it's all about Rhode Islanders uh, throughout the state, and that's where it starts. After that, then it's different qualities and different qualifications. You yourself are pretty um, humble and modest about the role you play, mm -hmm. um, that it is part of a larger uh, right. donor group there. Where would Rhode Island be without the Rhode Island Foundation? Well, you know, like I said, we're, we're a large funder, and so it's our privilege to do that. And I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about our team at the foundation. Mm -hmm. It's 50 very committed, passionate people working every day in different areas to help Rhode Island. And so it's our responsibility. You know, it's, it's, uh, we're here of, for, and by Rhode Island to be a proactive community and philanthropic leader. Neil Steinberg, the president and CEO of the Rhode Island Foundation, thanks so much for being here Thank and you. congratulations on thanks your very much. retirement.
And looking ahead to tomorrow's community focus, when we will have our monthly conversation with Rhode Island's Education Commissioner, Angelica Infante Green.